if we can get some 99 in for today. <laughs> we're almost at the 100 mark. <laughs> yeah, so, come on. But we're at Psalm 99 for tonight. Um, we'll be in Psalm 99 for tonight since we'll be recording. Um, it's gonna, the title is Yahweh's Awesome Name. He is holy and he is not from around here. That's the title for Psalm 99. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward. I'm going to introduce the introduction. I'm going to introduce the ministry. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have Hermano Lalo Pérez in, and then we'll do the introduction. The big Randy. All right. So, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Tabernacle of Meeting, help from above. The scripture is <clears throat> Revelation twenty one three, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Behold." The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. <clears throat> the, tabernacle, the, the, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the wilderness represented the dwelling place of God on this earth. But this tabernacle of God is, is the reality of his presence and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. The essence of God's desire and man's purpose. God's desire is to live in close fellowship with man. And man's purpose is to be a people unto God. Amen. Amen. Uh, scripture we have is uh, Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance by King David. Here we see David, God's chosen king sin by having relations Another man's wife, Bathsheba. But God has something to say about David's abuse and power, right? Because <clears throat> he was a king. And he right. sends his prophet Nathan to call David to repentance. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan uses a story to illustrate the seriousness of David's sin. And it's effective in calling David to repentance. There still were precautions from his sins. But because Nathan spoke the truth, David repented. And avoided bringing further punishment punishment on Israel. So he wrote Psalm 51. says, Create in me clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And sustain me with the willing spirit. Right? After the sin with Bathsheba, he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Lord, give that back to me. Yes. The joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit. Notice that. May the Lord sustain you. May the Lord sustain me throughout the week with that what? That willing spirit. Yeah. Right? The spirit is willing. But the flesh is what? It's weak. The flesh is weak, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Next we have is All right. Paul and Silas uh, teamed up with the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16. Um, the Lord uh, uh, sent the, they were thrown into prison for preaching Jesus in the street in the calle. Uh, but the Philippian jailer, <clears throat> upon being there, uh, the angel, right, <clears throat> shook up the prison and these men were set free. The chains were broken. The Philippian jailer cried out to Paul and Silas. In Acts chapter 16, verse 30, that he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Right, and they responded in verse 31. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Right, man, just believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Is any among you afflicted due to alcohol, due to depression, to anger, divorce, drug abuse, death of a loved one, mixed marriages, abandonment? Know that God loves you and waits for you to respond. To respond to the call, right? God says, hey, mm. your life. Right? Experiencing God's call may be a process, but answering his call requires a definite decision, right? A delayed obedience is disobedience. A delayed obedience is disobedience. But how do I know what my spiritual calling is? Well, you know it by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses, right? How do I know what my spiritual calling is? Well, you know it. By what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. Your ministry. Your ministry is found where you've been broken. And your testimony is found where you've been restored. Right? Your ministry is found where you've been broken. 
your testimony is found where you've been restored. Amen. That's the tabernacle meeting, help from above. That's who we are. And <clears throat> that's what we're about. Uh, we're going to move forward with Hermano Lalo. He's going to do us a favor and pray a sentence for tonight. Father in heaven, we come before you and Lord, we we ask you, Lord, to be with all those. First of all, to be with us, Lord, to be with us tonight here in the study. Be with Pastor Junior, with um, Brother Randy, brothers that may log on. Father, I pray that you give us the wisdom, the understanding to be able to to understand your word and to be able to share it with those that are in need, those that perhaps may be listening, those that perhaps may log on later on. And Father, uh, I come before you tonight and I just want to lift up, you know, everybody that's out there, Father God, all those that are probably struggling, those that are having a hard time getting back to to fellowship, getting back to where you have called them and where you want them to be, Lord. Father, I pray for those that are struggling and perhaps may be thinking that that there's no more hope for them. Perhaps those that have, in a way, um, slipped up and are caught up right now in transgression and in a in a sinful uh, style of of living, that you may draw them black, draw them back. Uh, unto uh, yeah. unto restoration with you and fellowship with the brothers. Yes. I pray for those that are suffering tonight. Those that are those that are suffering mm-hmm. with depression, anxiety, yes, fear, uh, financial. Those that are hurting because of relationship, because of. Um, because of a loved one that perhaps may have passed. Yes, Lord. those that are suffering, Father, that are suffering financially. Yes, spiritually or emotionally, mentally, Father. Teaching be everyone. with them, Father God. Be with our brothers. Okay. Right now, we have a few brothers that are not here tonight. Yes, Lord. that uh. Perhaps maybe going through it, Father. I pray that you be with them, Lord. Be with Brother Richard in his healing, Lord, his healing process. Brother Greg, that he's uh, in the hospital going through his uh, shares of of trials. And, uh, and also, you know, a sickness that has crept up into his body, Father. I pray, you know, for... Um, for his physical uh, healing. Yes, Lord. Yes. For Brother Randy and his whole family. Yes, Lord. Um, be with them, Lord. Be with all those, Father, that may be listening, that need your healing hand to be upon them. So, Father, I pray tonight, Father God, that you would be with all those, mm-hmm. Father, who are hurting, all those that are in distress, all those that are broken hearted for it says in your word that you are with those that are broken hearted father and Lord that you restore father give eyes to those that have no eyes to see help those to hear who need to hear and open up the hearts of those that need to be open Lord bring yeah. restoration to the marriages yes Lord Bring sight to the blind. Yes, Lord. Let those who are who are lame and can't walk, may they arise and walk, Father. Yes, For with you, Father God, there is nothing that's impossible. Father, be with each and every single one of them. And if I left out any, Father, please forgive me. And I know that you know who they are. And just be with them, Father God. Be with all of us, Lord. And help us. 
to continue to be steadfast yes. in you, Father, and to proclaim your name and to proclaim your gospel yes. and to share with those that are hurting, Father. Touch these people, Lord. Help us to bring light to those that are in need, those that are in darkness, Father. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray for Pastor Junior and the ministry that they're going to be doing on Saturday, Father God. Yes, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Mm -hmm. And prepare the hearts of those that are going to come by and maybe help or those that are going to come by and maybe uh, they need help, yes, Father. Lord. Just be with each and every single one and be with us in the study tonight. Yes. In Jesus' Lord. name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Gracias, hermano. We move forward with uh, hermano Randy. He's going to read the introduction for us tonight. Yes. Thank you. Church of the Most High God, we are moving forward. And, and thank you for that prayer, Lalo. It sure touched the heart, and I know God has a plan and a purpose and a reason for everything that's going on. He's gonna Amen. He's gonna use this word today to minister to us. I just feel that that's why I'm here today. <laughs> it's funny, huh? Church <laughs> of the Most High God, we are moving forward in the Book of Psalms and moving forward to our next chapter, in which is chapter ninety nine. For tonight, the title of my message, Junior's message, is Yahweh, Yahweh's awesome name. He is holy and he is not from around here. Psalm chapter 99 arises out of the psalmist in setting forth the kingdom of God in Zion. He exhorts all by the example of our forefathers to worship God at his holy hill. Take note on verses five and six that reads, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were his priests and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. Note here, that he is holy to be holy. He is to be set apart and unique. God is separate from all that is from all that is simple. He is the perfect measure of goodness. He is holiness. He is holiness itself and is the source of standard of the moral absolutes. We declare God is good all the time because he is holy and holy God demands his disciples to live a holy life. The Lord spoke to Ezekiel in chapter 36, verse 23, and said, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. Psalm 99, Yahweh's awesome name. He is holy and he is not from around here. See you tonight, guys. It's going to be a good message. Right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yahweh's awesome name. <clears throat> As we're going to see here in Scripture. We're going to see here in Psalm 99 mm -hmm. um, that his name is awesome. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we see that the name of the name of God is a blessing and a comfort. <clears throat> we praise your name. Um, you know, just just in, just to just to uh, uh, you know meditate on the Lord as as awesome, as his name. Being awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, the name of God is a blessing. The name of God is a blessing and a comfort. <clears throat> you know, we have, uh, we praise, we praise your name, El Shaddai. It means the God Almighty of blessings. And <clears throat> we praise your name, Adonai, my Lord and my master. You know, we have all those names of God. <clears throat> That's why it says, 
that 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 that, that, that the Lord's name is awesome. Because the name of God is a blessing and a comfort. Therefore, we praise your name, El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. El Shaddai means the God Almighty of blessings, <clears throat> right? And then we praise your name, Adonai, my Lord and my helper. So these are names. Well, you know, the Lord, some of the, the Lord's names, right? Um, and yeah, he, he's not from around here because he's holy, <laughs> right? <clears throat> he's holy and he's to be holy. Holy holy means to be distant and means to be to be distinct from. This is the principal word, principal Hebrew word used to describe the transcendence of God. Um, but, you know, that's based on Revelation. I mean, uh, based on Psalm 113, 4 through 6. There, uh, that's the that describes the transcendence of God. Um, but we'll get into a little bit more about that. Um, but you know, once again, like Big Randy just read the introduction, it's uh, Psalm chapter 99 arises out of the psalmist and setting forth his kingdom of God in Zion, right? He exhorts us. He exhorts all by the example of our forefathers to worship God in his holy hill. You know, that's why they put, uh, as a, a psalmist uses the example of our forefathers as Moses, and then you have Aaron, and then you have, then you have Samuel. <clears throat> you know, Samuel, the, the Samuel, this psalm is the only one to mention Samuel by name. You know, um, but the um, but this is what we have. We have with with um, with these. We, we have Moses. We have Aaron. We have Samuel. <clears throat> the psalmist worship, recalling God. By rec uh, the psalmist worship, God by recalling his saving acts to their forefathers, and. Moses is mentioned by name in several, several of the in several times. Um, the um, but we can go through a couple of the verses uh, refer referencing to to Moses. I mean, back when we were in back when we were in Psalm seventy seven. Psalm seventy seven was one of our one of our titles that we mentioned. Um, One of our titles of our message was Psalm 70. Let me see where I'm at. Psalm 77, right? <clears throat> Psalm 77. We have the day of trouble is the day of prayer. Remembering the acts of God. Remembering the acts of divine mercy. You know, when we were in the book of Psalm. 77, uh, we titled it, uh, The Day of Trouble is the Day of Prayer, Remembering God's Acts of Divine Mercy. Um, but we have Moses mentioned. We have Moses mentioned there in Psalm 77, verse 20. <clears throat> no, uh, Psalm 77, verse 20. It says, you led your people <clears throat> like a flock by the hand of Moses and of Aaron. <clears throat> right? Yeah. You know, once again, the, the psalmist worship God by recalling his act, by recalling his saving, saving acts to their forefathers for the, to the forerunner and Moses is mentioned by name. And Moses is mentioned by name in, in, in the Psalms several times. You know, like I said, when we were in, when we were in Psalm chapter 77, mm -hmm. we titled it, The Day of Trouble is the Day of Prayer, remembering, the, remembering God's acts of divine mercy. Right? Are you there in Psalm 77? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm there now. Okay, so take uh, take uh, Psalm Psalm chapter seventy seven verses one to three, 
and then we'll and then and you can touch up on verse 20. Okay, this is from the Living Bible right here, okay? One through three, Psalm 77. I cry to the Lord. I call and call to him. Oh, that he would listen. I am in deep trouble and I need his help so badly. All night long I pray, lifting my hands to heaven, pleading. There can be no joy for me until he acts. I think of God and moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. I cannot sleep until you act. I am too distressed even to pray. Yeah, my my uh, my New King James verse three says says I remembered God, and I was troubled. <clears throat> think about that. <clears throat> think about think about where where the psalmist was at. Mm -hmm. I cried to the Lord. You know your your translation says I, I your well that's verse one right I cried to the Lord. Yeah, um, Psalm seventy seven it says I cried to the Lord. I call and call to him, oh, that he would listen. I am in deep trouble and I need his help so badly. All night long I pray, lifting my hands to heaven, pleading. Go ahead. Right, so, I mean, look what he's doing right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's crying out to the Lord in the day of his trouble, right? Because he sought the Lord. Yeah. Um, exactly what I was doing yesterday around this time. <laughs> right? That's exactly what you shared earlier. Yeah. You know, the but the but the comforting thing is that right there in verse one it says it says and he gave ear to me. You know that my new King James says like this: it says, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice. And then it says, and he gave ear to me. The um, that's what we see here in Psalm ninety nine. Is that the Lord? Is that um, in Psalm ninety nine? It says it says that He answered. Psalm ninety nine verse eight says, "You answered them, O Lord our God. You were with them, God who forgives. So you took vengeance on their deeds." But you took vengeance on their deeds. But notice what it says. It says, you answered them, O Lord, our God. <clears throat> That's what we see here in Psalm 77. It says, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we're referring to, verse 20, right? Because uh, verse 20 in Psalm 77 is is what we're referring to Psalm, to, to Moses. Mm -hmm. So Moses would intercede for the people. Samuel would intercede for the people. Aaron, también. <clears throat> you know, they're both, they're, the three of them were intercessors. Your people all the world, right? Because they were priests unto him, but verse 20, right? What is it? How does your verse 20 read in Psalm 77? It says, um, It says, um, you led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. Notice that. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? You have you have God's, you have his saving. The psalmist worship God by recalling his saving acts to their forerunners. Moses is mentioned. By name in Psalm in the Psalms in the Psalms in the Psalms several times, <clears throat> you know, like we're at right here, we're at we're at Psalm seventy seven, right? In Psalm seventy seven twenty, Moses' name is mentioned, and Aaron's name is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why? Because of their piety, <clears throat> because of their, you know, their their set apart. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 set the example. Or what it meant to to worship the Creator. Right, they're known for their piety. Mm -hmm. 
and for their acts of reverence to the Most High. Moses, yeah. Right, so we have, so we read of we read of Moses, and then we we'll take a read on uh, um, on Samuel. <clears throat> we'll take a read on Samuel, and Samuel's going to be First Samuel chapter seven. Let's take a read on Samuel. Let's turn to First Samuel chapter seven. Concerning Aaron, you know, because you know, like I said, this is the first. This is the first. This is the first and the only psalm. <laughs> this psalm is the only, the only one mentioned. <clears throat> the Amen. only. This psalm is the only one to mention Samuel by name. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. The um, but the first Samuel chapter seven. Amen. Are you there? <clears throat> Let's take um. Let me see where I'm at. I read that earlier. I was exhorted right there. First Samuel chapter seven. Let's see. First Samuel chapter seven. Let's see. So we'll read the um, yeah, first um we'll do uh, first Samuel chapter seven verses seven through Through 10. Okay, ready? All right. When the Philistine leaders heard about the great crowds of Mizpah, they mobilized their armies and advanced. The Israelis were baldy, frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching pled with God to save us. They begged Samuel. So Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it to the Lord as a whole burnt offering and pleaded with him to help Israel. And the Lord responded. Just as, Sam, just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived for battle, but the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven and they were thrown into confusion and the Israelis routed them that was seven through ten right there seven to ten right yes can we read it over no no what the key verse was um the key verse was nine. <clears throat> the key verse was nine because so first Samuel first Samuel right. chapter verse nine, right? Yeah. So Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it to the Lord as a whole burnt offering and pleaded with him to help Israel. And the Lord responded. That's key right there. <laughs> yes. You know, we have a we have a God, you know. Who answers? The Lord yeah. responded, right? Right, the Lord responded. We but have, today, today would be a different deal, though, right? We pray and he, we call and he answers. Yes. That's what this is referring to. Because <clears throat> we're cross-referencing uh, Psalm 99. Mm-hmm. With uh, verse 8, Psalm 99, verse 8 <clears throat> says, You answered them, O Lord our God. 
right? We call him, he answers right here. Like Big Randy just read, right? First Samuel chapter 7, verse 9. It says, And Samuel took the suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. I mean, but look what took place, right? Verse 10. Read verse 10 again, Big Randy. That was 10 for uh, in the first Samuel. Yeah, verse 10 and 11. First Samuel chapter 7, verses uh, 9. 10 and 11? Oh, 10 and 11, yes. Okay, first Samuel chapter, chapter 7, 10 and 11 is... Uh, Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived for battle. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven, and they were thrown into confusion, and the Israelis routed them and chased them from the Mizpah to Bethkar, killing them all along the way. <laughs> yeah, my my King James, my new King James says, and all the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as the bellow, far as far as below Beth Car. I mean, notice notice what the Lord did there, healing them all the way. Right, that's what you get for interrupting God's prayer. <laughs> I mean, that's why Samuel is mentioned here. Yeah, here in the Psalm ninety nine, you know, like I said, it, it, this is the the only time Samuel is mentioned in in the Book of Psalms, oh. along with Moses and Aaron. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Moses are mentioned quite a few times in the Psalms. We just read that right now, uh, Psalm seventy seven twenty. We read of Moses and Aaron. They were, you know, they 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 led the children of Israel. Um, but um, you know, but we pray and God answers. Amen. That's, I mean, verse eight says, verse first Samuel chapter seven, verse eight, right? Once again, says the children of Israel said to Samuel, "Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that He." may save us from the hand of the Philistines. Notice that. Mm -hmm. They went to the man of God to intercede for them. That's when Samuel, right? Verse 9 said, Then Samuel took a suckling lamb, offered it, as a, offered it as, a, as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. That's what we're referring to, that the Lord answering him. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why Samuel is mentioned here. I like the way it says, and the Lord responded. And the Lord responded? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that speaks volume to me. Yes. You know, the conclusion is clear, <clears throat> that the Lord heard the prayers and did not remain silent since God answered the prayer of our ancestors, surely he will continue to answer the prayers of those who call upon him. Hmm. Thanks for saying that. Can you see that again? It says the conclusion is clear that the Lord heard the prayers and did not remain silent. Since God answered the prayers of our ancestors, surely he will continue to answer the prayers of those who call upon him. Thank you. Thanks for saying that because that blesses my heart to know that I can call upon the name of the Lord and he'll always be there for me and he will respond. You know, that's what I was exhorting Rosie, you know, uh, Lalo's daughter earlier before we came up. When we prayed for her, when you logged in, we prayed for her, <clears throat> you know, because sometimes you can you can get to that one point where in your life where you're just like, man, you know what? 
it even hurts to even to pray to God. Mm -hmm. We read that in Psalm 77. Because <clears throat> look what happened to the, we were at Psalm 77 where, where Moses and Aaron is mentioned. Notice what the psalmist is going through. Psalm 77, <clears throat> verses 1 to 3 again. It says, and I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice. And he, he gave ear to me. In the day of trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out. In the night without ceasing, my soul refused to be comforted. And then verse 3 says, I remember God and I was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Right? Because he's been yeah. crying. He's restless. His soul refused to be comforted. You know, what's your soul? Your soul is your, 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 soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So his mind refused to be comforted. His soul is, is you know, his mind. Your, your soul is your mind, your will, his will. And his, and his emotions refused to be comforted. It, it says right here, it says, uh, there can be no joy for me until he acts. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> you know, all, all night long I pray. Lifting my hands to heaven, pleading. There can be no joy for me until he acts. That's how we are a lot of times, you know. I mean, those of us that know God and know know him in our heart and everything, when we pray, we, we're expecting something back, you know. But those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, you know. I mean, ask Seek, knock, you know. I mean, I mean, this psalm speaks volume too. <clears throat> Verse four says, "You it says you hold my hand, you hold my eyelids open, so I am troubled that I cannot speak." Verse five says, "I considered, I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times." Verse six, I remember, I rem, I call to remembrance my song. In the night, I meditate with my heart, and my spirit makes the diligent search. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, will the Lord cast me off forever? And will he be favor favorable no more? Verse 8 says, his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Verse 9 says, has God for forgotten to be gracious? Mm. Has he... In anger, shut up his tender mercies. Selah. To meditate, to ponder, to think. You know, to think of what you just read. But notice what he said. And then it says, verse 10 says, And I said, this is my anguish. But I will remember the years, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on, your, on all your work. And talk about your deeds. So notice how he was able to come out of his depression there. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the depression is a failure to remember what salvation is. You know, David was able to. Well, actually, we have Asaph right here. Who's this? Yeah, Asaph. Asaph was 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 able to come out of his depression because, uh, because he remembered the works of the Lord. You know, once again, depression is a failure to remember. What salvation is. And here it is right here. Asaph mm. said, he says, it says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. Verse 12 says, I will, I will also meditate on all your work and talk about your deeds. Verse 13 says, Your way, O God, in the sanctuary, who is who is so great a God as our God? You know, and in, and in Psalm 99, we say that, that God is good all the time because, why? Because he is holy. Mm. And if we can grasp that, you know, I mean, if anyone out there are listening to this study, I mean, if you can only grasp that, that'll, that'll deliver you from, from your affliction, that'll deliver you from your depression. You know, once again, they, uh, um, 
depression is a failure to remember what salvation is. And here's Esau. Hmm. Remember, Esau was a forerunner of David. And, you know, he, what did he say? He says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work. On all I'm doing. What, how's your say? On all you're doing? I read, read it on your that's, that's what a song says, but that's not what it says. I, I remember um, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your doings. Talking about the Lord, you know. But um, so the 77, what number? Oh, no, 11 through. Um, Psalm through. 77, 11. 11 I, through. I recall the many miracles he did for me so long ago. Those wonderful deeds are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about them. 13, oh God, your ways are holy. Where is there any other as mighty as you? You are the God of miracles and wonders. You still demonstrate your awesome power. That's who God is. 13, 15. Uh, 13 and 14. Yeah, that was it. I mean, think about it. Look where homeboy's at right here. Yeah. You know, we can get to that point también, you know. You're giving it you're, up. When you're going through something like that, you know. That was kind of like where I was at yesterday. Don't get me wrong, because yesterday I couldn't breathe, bro. And I was thinking about mm -hmm. a couple different people. I started crying out to the Lord. I was hurting, bro. Mm -hmm. Turn bad, man. Uh, 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 you know, I was just moaning and groaning. And my wife, I kept my wife awake all night long. She was right there at my side. It was a tough deal. But the 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 sun came out this morning. You know? Right. And uh, you know. God made things right in my life. It's all good. Set me free. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the well, that's where that's where the ASAP is here. That's why Psalm 77. It says, you know, we titled it when we were in this in this chapter, we titled it The Day of Trouble is the Day of Prayer. Mm -hmm. Remembering God's acts of divine mercy. Mm -hmm. Remember God's acts of divine mercy. Yes. You know, and that's where we need to be at <clears throat> when we're going through such an affliction like this, to where your your soul refuses to be comforted. Like mm -hmm. verse two says, "In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted." Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and why? Because. At first, he started at the beginning. He said, yeah, the Lord heard me. <laughs> he heard my voice. But then he falls into that depression. He's crying out to God. He's crying out to God. He said, man, this guy's not hearing me. You know, that's why I was encouraging Rosie, you know, Lalo's daughter. Mm. You know, careful with that because the enemy can use that. Yeah. He can use that and, and run with it, you know? Yeah. Then you start doubting God. You know, like the like Asaph was right here, but but notice how he comes out of that. You know, once again, in verse eleven, mm -hmm. it says, "I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders, wonders of old, and I will what? I will meditate on all your work and talk about your deeds." You know, that's why sometimes it helps to speak to your speak to yourself instead of listening to yourself. Yeah, no doubt. When you start listening to yourself. You're going to do what homeboy did right here in verse 3. I remember God and I was troubled. <laughs> I remember God and I was troubled. It should be the other way around. Right. I mean, I, I can't do more than prayer until I start, until I first start with prayer. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and that's what's encouraging about the Psalms, you know, and, and David también, you know, in, in Psalm 13. You know, Psalm, verse 5 says, you know, I mean, David was able to come out of his depression for a common practice that he had. 
Yeah. <clears throat> you know, him too was able to come out of that. That's yeah. why they're encouraging, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Because they throw you into this loophole right here and then you're just like, boom, they come, they come out of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, that one, once again, that's why it helps to, to speak to yourself instead of listening to yourself. Right. <clears throat> um, but, um, you know, verse 15 says, you have, you have, you have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. <laughs> I mean, you know, think about this, meditate on it, ponder on it, you know, think about what you just read. And then you have 20, you know, 20 was the key verse I'm in. That's why we came to Psalm 77. Because of Moses, Moses is mentioned in Psalm 99. And this is a cross references. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 20 says, You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Notice that. That's why they're mentioned here. Because why? Because leaders lead by example. Mm -hmm. Using Moses and Aaron as that example. Right. Even if we said that in a in a couple sentences to the brethren, they would understand where we're coming from, you know. If we were hanging out with the guys building something or doing something for Jesus or mm -hmm. you know, just hanging out, you know, that'd be a something to reference to, you know. Like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. I wasn't there to see that, but the way I've been told is it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. For Moses to come out of that hill, you know, with the tablets, that would have been a sight to see. The um, then we have Aaron. <clears throat> you have Aaron in Psalm 115 10 through 12. Psalm 115 10 through 12. Uh huh. Or right, you want to take a read on that one? Yeah. 115, 10 through 12. Okay. O priests of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. All of you, his people, trust in him. He is your helper. He is your shield. I, I would... Now, now, you said 10 and 11? Uh, uh, 10 through 12. Maybe 9, 10, and 11. 9, 10, and 11? Yeah, because it says, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. O priests of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is your helper. He is your shield. All of you, his people, trust in him. He is your helper. He is your shield. And maybe even the next one, too. You know, Jehovah is constantly thinking about us, and he will surely bless us. That could be a good end to that whole paragraph. Oh, I know, right? You know, and then, you know, once again, the psalmist here is <clears throat> the psalmist worship. God recalling his acts, his saving act to the four runners and Moses is mentioned by name as is of Aaron and that's why we're, we're that's where we're referencing 115 Psalm 115 verses 10 well it's actually 10 and 12 mm -hmm. but you but you're, you're you're reading it from 9 through 12 right <clears throat> I mean verse 12 says on my King James my new King James says the Lord has been mindful of us 
He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Right? 13 says, He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the, mm -hmm. Lord, may the Lord give you increase more and more. And you and your children, <clears throat> may you be blessed by the Lord who made the heavens and the heaven and earth. Mm hmm I mean, those two verses right there speak volume. Yes. <clears throat> when you want to pray for somebody, pray a Psalm 115, 14 and 15. May the Lord give you increase more and more. Lord. You and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. That'll be someone great comfort and peace to his familia. So I, I, I pray Psalms 115, 14, and 15. That's how you do it, huh? That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how you do it. When you well, pray, yeah, because, you know, when we pray, hey, Lord, go right? ahead. No, I'm saying because when we pray scripture, what happens? You know, I mean, yeah. We pray scripture because you're teaching pray. me that. You're teaching me that still. I, right. I'm learning. <laughs> you're teaching me that. God speaks, right? You're teaching me to say it, though, and to remember it and to memorize it, you know? Yeah. That's how you've always been. I'm still catching on. But yeah, I don't well, remember that one. I mean... 14 and 15. May the Lord richly bless you both. Bless both you and your children. Yes, Jehovah, who made heaven and earth, will personally bless you. If you call upon him. That that speaks volume right there. Mm. Then, the um it's a good this is a good chapter here though. Yeah. Yeah, but we're referencing Aaron. Mm -hmm. You know, but just to think that the psalm that this psalm is the only one to mention Samuel in Psalm 77. I mean, mm. not Psalm 77, uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 77. Where we were at, where we were at the beginning, right? 1 Samuel 10, right? 1 Samuel chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse... Uh... Verse 9. Samuel chapter seven verse nine was the first was the is the only psalm to mention Samuel, and you got Moses and you got Aaron all over the place. <laughs> yeah, right. I got quite a few verses on all that. Moses and Aaron, um, but we can look at Moses once again. Uh, psalm one hundred five verse twenty six. Okay. What verse? Yeah? Uh, Psalm 105, verse 26. Who do we have on there? Verse 26. Okay. Moses. But God sent Moses as his representative, representative, representative. But God sent Moses as his representative and Aaron with him. So there you have Moses and you have Aaron. Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron. Um, and Aaron with him. Yeah. To call down miracles of terror upon the land of Egypt. Okay, sent Moses. Yeah, I remember hearing that often, but God sent Moses, you know. But God sent Moses. This is Moses, and Moses and Samuel were mentioned because they were um, 
and Nimit because they were distinguished <clears throat> because they were distinguished for for prayer and had great success in it for the people of Israel. Mm. And we just read for Samuel chapter seven that the key verse was nine. Um, but but you know once again they were known for their piety, for their reverence, for their devotion to God. The um, but let's read the chapter and then and then I'll touch up a little bit more of what I have here. Okay, so. Um, uh Psalms one hundred six or one hundred five? No, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do our chapter Psalm ninety nine. Psalm oh, no, ninety nine, and it's based on our title. You want me to get a different uh different word on this one, or should I stick with the the living? I got another Bible here. What do you what what is it? What I got the living right now, but you think I should switch over to? Something we understand a little better? Uh, you can. Okay. So, um, 99, right? Yeah, we're going to read Psalm 99. Okay. All right, Psalm 99. You start this off. A pretty small paragraph. Ready to hear it? Yeah, the chapter is not that big. No. It's very short. It's only we only have um we only got nine verses. <laughs> you want me to go ahead and take it on? Yeah, start us off. <clears throat> okay, the Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity in Jacob you have done what is just and right exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool he is holy Moses and Aaron were among his priests Samuel was among those who called on his name they called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord, our God, you answered them. You, are, you were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Right? Yes, yes. I mean, we just read verse, uh, verse 8. We were referencing verse 8 <clears throat> when we went with Samuel, we went with Moses. Yeah. You, right? We call and God answers. Yeah. Amen. Right. And that's where we need the exhortation because, you know, once again, we were at Psalm 77. And you know that homeboy was going through some tough times. <clears throat> yeah. Where he started off well and then he started, you know, listening to himself. Then he started speaking to himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look out. But, um, but the Lord reigns. <clears throat> Here in Psalm, Psalm 99. Yeah. Says the says the, the Lord reigns. You know, what does it mean for the Lord to reign? <clears throat> it means that all authority and power is given, has been given over to him. You know, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me. 
Um, but but the Lord reigns. <clears throat> Psalm 93, verse 1. Our God reigns. Right? <laughs> Our God reigns. These are the um God reigns. Our God reigns. Psalm 93, verse 1. It says the Lord reigns, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed, <clears throat> he has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established, it cannot be moved. You know, when we were in that one, <clears throat> it was the Lord reigning. Yeah, we named, it, we named it divine creation, is the basis of divine authority. Psalm 93, we titled it, Divine Creation is the Basis of Divine Authority. Because, because the Lord reigns. <laughs> and it's a priestly, it's a kingly psalm, a royal psalm because, because, of, because he is clothed in majesty. Mm -hmm. The... Um, that's why they call them royal psalms. Yeah. You know, once again, this one starts with the Lord reigns. He reigns and he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He girded, girded himself with strength. Surely the world shall be established. The world is established, so it cannot be moved. Mm -hmm. your, says, your throne is established from the old. You are from everlasting. Right? Read your, go ahead and read verse 3 and 4. Of Psalm 93. Oh, 93. I was on 94 there. 3 and 4? Yeah. It's the mighty oceans thunder your praise. You are mightier than all the breakers pounding on the seashores of the world. And then the NIV says... The NIV says, um, well, read, read one to three, one through four. One through four, the Lord reigns. He is robbed in majesty. Robed. The, huh? Robed. Robed. Yeah, yeah, robbed. The <laughs> Lord reigns. <laughs> he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up. The seas have lifted up. Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. I can't yeah. go further right there. That's no lie, though. Our Lord, our God, he's mightier. He's mighty. Mighty to save, bro. Right. Mighty to save. I mean, that's why Psalm ninety three is a is a royal psalm. Yeah, and I'm glad they're, I'm here. The royal because the, the word royal means uh, as a king. We call the psalms we call the psalms royal because they call God king. Okay, <clears throat> the royal psalms tells us that he is ruling over all the world. The, um, you know, that's why it says that the Lord reigns. Yeah. Psalm 91, Psalm 97, uh, verse 1 says, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice, and let the multitude of the isles be glad. The title, Yahweh reigns righteously and justly, don't doubt his love for you in hard times. You know, that was our 
that was our title for Psalm 97. Mm-hmm. Huh. Psalm 97. When we were in Psalm 97, we titled it Yahweh reigns righteous and justly. Don't doubt his love for you in hard times. Mm. Um, because you know, the reason why I titled it like that is because. Just knowing that the God, that the Lord reigns, you know, you might be questioning yourself, then why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. And God claims to be who he is. Why am I going through this? And why is my family going through this? You know, that's why I titled it. Yahweh reigns righteously and justly. Don't doubt his love for you in hard times. More like be happy in hard times, bro. Be happy when you get the hard times. He's just trying to renew us, you know. He's just trying to renew our minds. He's just trying to equip us, get us ready for something, you know. Right. He's just, hey, if I can always know that God's trying to help me, trying to make me better, trying to make me a better person after going through all this stuff I didn't want to go through, it always works out, you know. Yeah, and if and it also puts me in check. It makes me know that I messed up. If I make a mistake and I mess up, then I know what that conversation is for, and I know why God made me go through it because I know I messed up somewhere. You know, your sin will find you out. It doesn't matter whatever you do, man. Whatever happens in your life, mm -hmm. you to find you out. And the reason why we're living this life and the reason why things happen is because God's trying to show us something. He's trying, trying to teach us something. You know? Right. He's trying to show us how much he loves us. Because if he didn't care for us, he wouldn't be putting us in check like that. He wouldn't be saying, hey, man, you, you, what'd, you, what'd you do that for? What'd you say that for? You know? Put you in check, you know? Yeah, the... Um, yeah, well, that's what, we, that's what we just read right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. We read that in, um, in Psalm 99. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about that right now, you're talking about the. Uh... Oh, como dije, the last time I said that the. Uh... Your sin, your sin may be personal, but it's not private. <laughs> <clears throat> it's right here in verse eight. It says, "You answered them, O Lord, our God. You were to them, God who forgives." Though you took vengeance on their deeds, though you took vengeance on your deeds, it says, exalt the Lord our God and worship his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. You know, once again, like I mentioned in our, in our, uh, you know, the, the introduction, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> and he, he commands his disciples to be holy. You know, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to him. You know, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, do you not know that your body is the temple? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Because <clears throat> that's where I was going to go with that one. Mm -hmm. In reference to God is holy. And he commands his disciples to be holy. Chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. And the key verse is 9. But I was reading Corinthians earlier. I think I was, I was reading part of it. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter six. Oh. 
you know, it starts with um, uh, we would do like I guess twelve, twelve through twenty. Twelve through twenty, okay. And First Corinthians chapter six, twelve through twenty. You want to take it, Manager? Yeah. And it's a reference to, to glorifying God in body and spirit. Hmm. I have the right to do anything. You say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in, her, in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. You want me to go all the way to 19? Uh, to 20, yeah. Free from sexual immorality, all other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do not do you not know that your holy that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You know, that translation says honor. This one says glorify. Glorify God in your body. Glorify God with your body. Let me see here. That's why it's refer that's why we're referencing First Corinthians chapter six uh with verse 19, because you know we don't belong to ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, the holy God do command demands we don't belong uh, to ourselves to be holy. Because we're holy. <clears throat> I mean, we can only be holy in the Lord. <laughs> Because we're holy in the Lord, our bodies don't belong to us. They they belong to God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, once again, the introduction says he is holy. He is holy. <clears throat> to be holy is to be set apart and, and unique. God is, sep God is separate from all that is sinful. He is the perfect measure of goodness. He is also holiness itself and is the source of standard moral absolutes we declare god is good all the time why because because he is holy and a holy god demands his disciples to live a holy life mm -hmm. and he commands his disciples to live a holy life and we're referencing first corinthians chapter 6 uh verses 12 through 19 because uh here in my home in bible says verse 12 says everything is permissible for me but not everything is helpful everything is permiss permissible for me but i will not be brought under the control of anything you see how it how paul is referencing to that <laughs> check this out mine says mine uh 612 says 
in the living, I can do anything I want to if Christ has not said no. But some of these things aren't good for me. Even if I am allowed to do them, I'll refuse to do, to, I'll refuse to if I think they might get such a grip on me that I can't easily stop when I want to. Wow, what does that mean? Oh, does that, is that how yours reads? That's what mine says right here in 6, 1 Corinthians 6, verse uh, 12. Mike? Oh, verse 12. Everything is permissible for me. Well, let me read my King James. Oh. My new King James. My new King James says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I mean, it's reference to where the spirit of the Lord, there's freedom, right? But there's also boundaries. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 says, says, all things are lawful for me, but, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under its power of any. Right. Once again, it says all things are, are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under its power. Uh, OK. And then his reference things to are possible, but you, you, you're not going to be tied down to an addiction or something. Right. You're not going to end up addicted to something. Yeah, that's what it means. I mean, you get referenced it to that one scripture that says, with the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. <laughs> mm -hmm. But God gives us the freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the freedom is not to sin, it's to win. <laughs> oh, you see, I like that one. Right? <clears throat> with the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Like the Apostle Paul speaks right here, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful for me. To, to sin, but win? Well, how'd you say that one? But yeah, I said... I said, uh, with the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom, but, um, you know, God gives us the freedom, but this, but the freedom is not to sin, but it's to win. The freedom is not to sin. It's to win. Yes. Okay. The freedom that God gives us to, it gives us is, is the freedom to win and not to sin. Okay. It gives us a freedom not to sin, but to win. Right. I need to put that on the back of a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to clarify here. I mean, that's where I always put, that's where I put the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. <laughs> because it's, it's the, it's to win and not to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to be able to overcome all that. And if we can't, then, then guess what? <laughs> we need to step or step away from that. Away from the table. Um the um but here's a here's an example. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Well, anyway, we're talking about the um what we're referencing here is the um is to be holy and to be set apart. Mm -hmm. Right? Because because why? Because God is holy. And We worship God at his at his footstool. Um, but let me, let me go to verse eight. Since we we're talking about the um concerning about the body, <clears throat> glorifying the body, glorifying God in the body and the spirit. That's where we were at right now with first Corinthians chapter six, verses twelve through nineteen. Um you want me to read it? Because First Corinthians chapter six, we have we have one of these verses <clears throat> that teaches us that the uh, the unjust will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? Right. Chapter six. 
Uh, First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Verse nine. And and ten. Nine and ten. It says. Do you know that those doing such things have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't fool, don't fool yourselves. Those who live immoral lives, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, or homosexuals, will have no share in his kingdom. Neither will thieves or greedy people drunkards, slanders, or robbers. That verse just by itself can sure put a lot of people in check if they believe in the Lord. Because that would set the record straight right there. But because people have their free will to do anything they want to do, that's what they're doing. Well, you know, we read uh, First Corinthians chapter one that, that God gave him over to a debased mind, right? But here, but notice what it says, verse eleven. It says, "But but some of you <clears throat> were like this, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ." and by the Spirit of our God. Say that one more time. It says, some, is it, okay, First Corinthians chapter 6, 11 says, says Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, some of you were like this, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. It says, this was you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. What does it mean to be sanctified? It means to be set apart. And you were justified, just as you never sinned. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Apart from that, no. <laughs> I can do anything I want to if Christ has not said no. But I'm reading that right there. There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins are washed away and you are set apart from, from for God. And he has accepted you because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of our God has done for you. Exactly what you said. Right? This is this is this is our redemption right here. But on that particular um, those who uh, those who live immoral lives, who are idol worshippers, adulterers, homosexuals, will have no share. In his kingdom, neither will thieves or greedy people, drunkards, slanders, or robbers. There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins are washed away and you are set apart for God. And if you think about it like that, then you shall be saved. Right? <clears throat> I mean, God saved us. If you live in that, though, oh yeah, then it, you got you're gonna have to pay the other deal. I, I mean, worry, I worry about my son. You know, whenever I read something that has to do with, you know, being gay and all, I get, you know, I, I mean, I don't become a judge. I just become a worry, a guy that's worried. Yeah. You know, it's not that I'm trying to be a judge or trying to judge you, I'm more or less trying to say, man, you know, what well, would the, it take? You know, go the, ahead. The one that's going to speak to him. And all we can do is pray for them. Yeah. Pray that they would, that they would see the light. 
It'd have to be between him and God, no doubt. Nothing else is holding him back. Right. Just him and God. God has a plan, though. I know he's not finished with him yet. Oh, yeah. We need to believe that. Yeah. But notice notice uh, Psalm 99, once again, it says verse 8. It says, well, I'll read it on my Holman Bible. My Holman says, the Lord God, the Lord our God. You answered them. <clears throat> you were a God who forgave them, but punished their misdeeds. So God forgave him, but he yeah. punished misdeeds. And then my, my King James, my new King James says, you answered them, O Lord, our, our God. You were to them God who forgives, though you took vengeance on their deeds. Let me see that. Uh, he is enthroned upon the cherubim like the whole earth is shaped. Jehovah sits in majesty in Zion. Verse 8, right? I'm trying to uh, put it together, but... I would read it. O Jehovah our God, you answered them and forgave their sins, yet punished them when they went wrong. Okay. You know, the, uh, the Lord answered them and forgave them. That's the reason for the praise in verse 9. And it's an invitation for the people praying this psalm to call upon the Lord to receive help and forgiveness. Samuel called upon the Lord for help, and the Lord answered him. We read that in 1 Samuel chapter 7. Yeah. Um, once again, we call and God answers. It says the Lord answers them. The Lord answered them and forgave them. Even when God forgave them, even when God forgave his people, he still punished them. Yeah. As one scholar said, I'm going to read this to you. As one scholar said, because I wrote it out in my notes. As one scholar said, the psalmist is saying, don't presume on God's forgiveness as an easy, as, as easy or routine. God's freedom to forgive does not negate the importance of obedience to God's requirement or excuse individuals for their consequences for wrongdoing. It says the uncomfortable, it says the uncomfortable but important connection between forgiveness and punishment. In Psalm 99, it says this, it says it reminded me of, of Robert Louis Deer. That was his name, Robert Louis Deer, right? They're using this as an example. Once again, it says the uncomfortable but important connection between forgiveness and punishment. Because that's what you see here in verse 9. Yeah. Forg forgiveness and punishment. Right? God forgives you, but then he punishes you. <laughs> but yeah. this, is what, this is what he's saying. Exalt the Lord and worship his holy for he is holy. Okay, go ahead. But th this is what he's saying right here. Forgiveness and punishment in Psalm 99, reminding me of Robert Louis Dear. He, he is the man who shot up the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Colorado Springs, Colorado in November. <clears throat> Unlike some other recent shooters who have been identified as radicalized Muslims, Robert Lewis called himself a Bible-believing Christian, one who one of his former wives summed him up in these words. Uh, he claims to be a Christian and is extremely evangelistic, but he doesn't, but he does not follow the Bible in actions. He says that as long as he believes, he will be saved. He can do whatever he pleases. What a classic distortion of the gospel of justification. One can hear Paul shouting. What shall we say then? 
Shall we go on sinning so that the grace of God may increase? By no means. We died to sin. Mm -hmm. how, how can we live? How can we live in it any longer? That was Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Right. One, th one and two. <laughs> but you see what this guy did? <clears throat> you know, he's the one that shot up the Planned Parenthood. <laughs> and and yeah. his wife. His wife said it says one of his wives. Oh. It, says, it says that it says that uh, it says Robert Lewis called himself to be a Bible believing Christian, one who was former, one who one of his former wives summed him up in these words. He claims to be a Christian and is extremely evangelistic, but he does not follow the Bible in his actions. He says that as long as he believes, as long as he believes. He will be saved. He can do whatever he pleases. Notice that. But the Apostle Paul would be shouting this in Romans 6, 1 through 12. Paul shouting, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that the grace of God may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? You know, how can we continue to live in sin? If we're born again, we're not going to be shooting any plant parrot. <laughs> yeah. You know, even even me, you know, sometimes I get involved in doing something that I know for a fact ain't right. And I just still do it, you know. But, you know, this is part of the reason why I keep on reading his word and seeking his face is just so I can stop doing these things like this and that and the other thing, you know, the sin that's within my life, you know, it's just, you know, I still fall short, you know, I still slip and fall sometimes. I mean, I, I won't, I don't go backwards, you know, I don't backslide, but you know, I, I, I trip, you know, and you know, that's, that's a life we all gotta live, you know. How how can anyone keep from doing that? Just make sure you're constantly talking to the Lord 24-7, you know. It's the only way out, you know. Only one way through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. He says he's the way, right? The truth and the life. He's the one way, remember? One way. That's it. <laughs> Man, tough. And you know, like I like I introduced the ministry, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Tell you. you know, and, and it's a constant battle, bro. <clears throat> I mean, we have any listeners listening to this, you know, study. I mean, it's it's a daily it's a daily battle against our flesh. You know, our flesh wants this, but the spirit says, Charlie, don't, you know, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> yeah. You know? But it's a constant battle. The battle against the flesh with the spirit. Um, that's why it helps to, to, uh, you know, to read the scriptures and meditate on them and speak it to yourself. <clears throat> you know, Romans 8, 5 says, those who walk according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who walk according to the spirit, according to the spirit, you know, those are, the, those are the scriptures that we need to use and take to heart. I mean, put them on your dash or your car, write it out everywhere, <laughs> meditate on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in the groceries with my wife and I'm just like, I give her the bags that she needs. And then I'm, I'm looking at my cards. I'm just meditating on scripture and meditating on scripture. <clears throat> I mean, you got to occupy your mind, bro. Yeah. Remember, your mind is like a waiting room. Thoughts come in invited and uninvited. And those uninvited thoughts, you need to rebuke them. You know, one way to do that is to is to is to put put scripture in there. Yeah. If you occupy your mind with scripture, you know what I mean. It'll take that place of that thought. Yeah. And you know, um, a pastor told me he says, you know, take 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 your thoughts captive. Right. You know, take take those evil thoughts captive take those 
thoughts that you don't want to do this or you don't want to do that. You don't want to feel this way. You don't want to feel Keep all those negative thoughts captive. And the peace of God will be with you forever. You know? That was from Pastor Matt New Hope. New Hope Church had told me that. Randy, you got to take your thoughts captive, man. You got to take every every um, evil and idle word captive. It's 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 scripture. Yeah. You know, I don't know where it says it, but yeah, I think it's. I'm not sure. I think it's Corinthians ten. Um. Taking every thought captive. Yeah. And bring it into subjection. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm, it might be 10. I'm not sure. No, 10 is in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first Corinthians chapter 6. Um... Oh, here we are again with the Christian liberty. <laughs> oh, this is where we were at, no? <clears throat> no, we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But Christian liberty, everything is permissible, but not everything is helpful. Everything is permissible. Here's, here it is again. The same verse we were reading earlier. <clears throat> but not everything builds up. No one should seek his own good, but the good of other people. Uh, and then it's talking about me. Kind of like the same thing. Every That's time. For six. I think it's New Testament. Don't read that. No, it is. It is a New Testament. It might be second. Corinthians chapter 10. I know it's I know it's chapter. I think I want to say it's chapter 10. I, I don't have a little cordons here. I have to find it quick, you know. Oh, here, I got it. I do have a concordance, and I'm very quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> Every thought captive. All right here. First, yeah, it's first Corinthians first, second. second Corinthians ten five. Uh, have... What do you got? No, that's it. Second Corinthians chapter. I'm gonna say it's um let me see. This is six, this is um three. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 10, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 says, For although we are walking in the flesh, we do not rage war in, in a fleshly way. Verse 4, since the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but powerful through the God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments, verse 5, and every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. Taking every thought captive. Taking every thought captive. There it is. To That's the right. obedience of Christ. Yeah, I see it. Second Corinthians 10 5. <laughs> five. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, you know, anything that exalts itself or tries to exalt itself above God is. Wrong, you know, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. There you go. So it's Second Corinthians 10, 5. Second Corinthians ten five. 
That's what I've been trying to live on, though, man. Trying to stick to that. But look what it says. Look what verse 7 says. <clears throat> it says, look at what is obvious. If anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, he should remind himself of this. Just as he belongs to Christ, so do we. Notice that. Where, where is this one at? Right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7. 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second, right now verse. we're reading in chapter. What verse? Uh, verse 7. 7. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. Yeah, mine says, even, huh? mine says, look at look at what is obvious. Here's my home in translation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 7, it says, it says, look at what is obvious. If anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, he should remind himself of this. Just as he belongs to Christ, so do we. Verse 8 says, for if I boast some more about our authority, which is the Lord, which is the Lord gave for building up and not for tearing down, yeah. I'm ashamed. Verse 9 says, I don't want to seem as though I'm trying to terrify you with my with my letters. <clears throat> For it is said, the letters are weightly and powerful, but the physical presence is weak, and his pre and his public speaking is despicable. Where is that at now? Um, verse 10. 10, okay. 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10. 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. I was still trying to... So it was seven, then do you look at the things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, I belong to Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is in Christ, even so, we are in Christ. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for advocation and not for our destruction, I shall not be ashamed, ashamed lest I seem to terrify you by letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a person consider this what we are in word by letters when we are absent, such we such we will also be indeed when we are present. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letters when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. I don't know what that means. No, it's referring to the letters, but in his very referring to, if you're going to boast, you're going to boast on the Lord. It's right here, verse 17. Go. Cool. It says, so, so the one who boasts must boast in the Lord. Right. For, verse 18 says, for it is not the one uh, com commending himself who is approved, but the one the Lord commends. So in other words, don't boast on your own, you know, self. You're going to boast, you're going to boast on the Lord. Why? Because if anyone is, verse 7, it says, because if anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, he should remind himself of this. Just as he belonged to, to Christ, so do we. <clears throat> in, other words, in other words, stay fast in the Lord. <laughs> oh, okay. I was sitting that, there listening to you there for a second, and then you stopped. I'm going, oh, wait a minute. Okay. That's what 
You look at the things according to the order. I understand it. I'm not, I don't not understand it. If anyone is convinced in himself, that little, that last part though, that was kind of confusing to me. I don't know why, but maybe I'm just reading it wrong, you know? And it's about something that I've heard a million times, you know? Right. <laughs> and I've understood it a million times, so I'm going to just let it go. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for education and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed, as I seem to terrify you by the letters. Okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to clarify that one. Um, but the um, the next one is the uh, what we spoke about, Samuel. <clears throat> um, but the other reference to Samuel is in Book of Acts three twenty four. Acts three twenty four. It says this psalm is the only one is the only one to mention Samuel's name. Samuel was the was the chief among the prophets. Mm -hmm. um, and the book of Acts speaks about that. The apostle Paul speaks of it in Acts chapter 3, verse 24. Uh -huh. Acts got chapter it. you got it? Yeah. Samuel. And every prophet since have all spoken about what is going on today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in God's promise to your ancestors to bless the entire world through the Jewish race. That is the promise God gave to Abraham. And as soon as God had brought his servant to life again, he sent him first to all. And as soon as God had brought his servant to life again, he sent him first of all to you men of Israel to bless you by turning you back from your sins. I want to read it one more time, okay? Yeah. Samuel and every prophet since have all spoken about what is going on today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in God's promise to your ancestors to bless the entire world through the Jewish race. That is the promise God gave to Abraham. And as soon as God had brought his servant to life again, He sent him first of all to you men of Israel to bless you by turning you back from your sins. So he's talking about his servant was Jesus, right? Right. Yeah. But in, in referring to the prophets, <clears throat> Samuel was chief among the prophets. You know, and we go to the book of Samuel, we remember that he started... Um, that he was chief among the prophets. Samuel? Yeah. Or Samuel? Yeah, I, I didn't write down the scripture. I got to look oh, for it. I have it here somewhere, but... <laughs> but he was the chief of all the prophets then. Yeah. He, he was basically the, the company commander then, huh? Of all the prophets. Yeah, that's why my home in the Bible says this. It says, uh, verse 24, right? Of Acts chapter 3. It says, yeah. in addition, in addition, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those after him have also announced these days. That's the key. Oh, and also what? Have, uh, have also announced these days. Oh. Uh, wow. You are of, of, the, of, of the prophets and of the covenant of God, which and the covenant that God made with your forefathers. You know, right, right here once again. In addition to to all the prophets who have spoken from who from Samuel, right, 
and those after him. Huh. But the um, but here we have another thing. Here we have some. But well, we can end with this one. Uh, we'll do the verse eight again. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. No, verse 6 of Psalm 99. Psalm 99, verse Wait. 8. No, verse 6. Verse 6. Psalm. <clears throat> One of the verses we've been <clears throat> meditating on. Uh -huh. cross-referencing right uh, Psalm 99 verse 6 says Moses and Aaron were among the priests Samuel <clears throat> also among those calling on his name they called on the Lord and he answered them yeah you know those who called upon the name of the Lord calling on the calling on the name of the Lord includes the whole worship of God and it is often used in prayer the object in which is God and him only and who is to be called upon at all times and especially at the time of trouble and always in faith with sincerity and truth, honor is to be among such persons. These men were these men were known for their piety, particularly in prayer. Well, that's what you just said in the beginning of this study. Right. <laughs> right. Um, um, what verse are you on right now? Uh, I'm on verse uh, 6. Um, Psalm 99, verse 6, right? Correct. Okay. I'm trying to see that word piety. Oh, no. I, no, I wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it in my notes right here. Yeah. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he had given them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship that is holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Right? Go ahead. You know, and I'm going to reference uh, Jeremiah 1.5. With uh, Psalm ninety nine six. Okay. Once again, these men were these men were known for their piety, particularly in prayer. You know, piety and their it means their devotion to to the Most High. Uh, Jeremiah fifteen one. 15-1. Got it. Then the Lord said to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. go ahead. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me pleading for those people, even then I wouldn't help them away with them. Get them out of my sight. Wow. You know, we're talking about intercessory prayer. And then we prayed earlier, when we started the study earlier, we prayed for a stock, uh, Rosie. Rosie. You know? um, but here you have Moses interceding. That's what we mean by intercession. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 15, 1 says, then, the, then, then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, right? It says, to pray before me, is to make intercession for the people. Mm -hmm. He says Moses and Samuel were named because they were eminent for prayer and had great success in it for the people of Israel. Um, eminent means that they were distinguished, they were noteworthy above others. Piety is to reverence 
the supreme being to exercise effectiveness in obedience to his will mm -hmm. to his service you know piety is your devotion to god that's what piety is piety is your devotion to god um that's the uh that's what i was going to share on that one the um I think that's all I got, pretty much. <laughs> Other than God. Piety is devotion to God. Yeah, piety is your devotion to God. Is piety, um, the definition of piety is devotion? Yes. Devoted? It, it's your devotion, it's your reverence to God. But is it to God, or is, what's what's a, a main reference? Is it piety equals Devotion to a God, or is it devotion? It's, it, it's, it's your devotion to, to the Most High. Okay. Uh, I, I wrote it out as... Um, piety. Piety is to reverence the Supreme Being. To exercise affection and obedience to His will and His service. Your devotion, and I wrote right here, your devotion to God. Once again, right? Piety is to reverence the Supreme Being. You know, in a, like I wrote here, to call upon the name of the Lord means more than than, than pleading for salvation. It means to, to be, this means to submit to his will. <laughs> right? Because we're talking about those who called upon the Lord. It says Moses and Aaron, verse, right? Psalm 99, 8 again. I mean, six. It says, Moses and Aaron were among the priests. <clears throat> Samuel, also among those calling upon, calling upon his name. They called and the Lord answered them. Right? We call and God answers. Right? It, it, it's funny because I, I put up the dictionary and even in the dictionary, piety is more or less a religious word. I mean... <laughs> says the quality of being religious or reverent, acts of piety and charity, a belief of point of view that is accepted with unthinking conventional reference. Well, so, you know, so piety, the way you said it, piety mm -hmm. is, what'd you say? Your devotion to God. Devotion to God. I mean, piety is devotion to God, and that's something we all have to have. That's why. That's why they're mentioned. That's why Aaron, Moses and Aaron and Samuel are mentioned here. Yeah, and that's why the Lord answered them. <laughs> and that's Samuel. Samuel was one of the head guys. That's why he's in there in the first place. Moses, Aaron, and Samuel basically right. were the main guys through the Bible that led the people around trying to teach them and show them exactly who God was. Right. That's why they're mentioned. And that's what it is, you know, submitting to his will. Submitting to his will. Okay, yeah. To call upon the name of the Lord means to means more than pleading for salvation. It means submitting to his will. Submitting to his will, staying on the line, you know, staying uh, with the Lord, staying being born again. Notice and what it says again. Piety again. It says piety is to is to reverence the supreme being. To exercise affection and to, to exercise affection in obedience to his will and to his service. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that uh, to call upon the name of the Lord means more than pleading for salvation. It's submitting to his will. <laughs> I'm going to use that in some conversations for sure. Remember to, you know, James 4, 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Right. 
So it's a mission, right? Yeah. The, um, but all right, that's all I got. <laughs> so right. we'll pray for Ro Rosie. <clears throat> Uh, Lalo's uh, daughter once again, and then we'll pray for for uh, your the brother, right? Your brother that's is he in the motorcycle club? I mean, Kevin. I mean, Ken. Jeremy. Is it Ken? You said Ken, no? Oh, Ken is one of the guys with a half a lung. Yeah, he's only got a half a lung. The other lung is gone, and yeah. then Jeremy, whose father passed away. Oh, Jeremy. He's the president of the motorcycle club, the one whose father passed away this week. Oh, yeah. He's the one you were mentioning earlier, huh? Uh-huh. And then Ken was the one that only has a half a lung, and he's his breathing is kind of messed up right now. So he's kind of trying to get it back to order again. It's kind of hard, but I don't know what he's going through. But I know he's he's doing the best he can do. And he loves the Lord. Yeah. And my whole family's sick. My wife and my daughter. It's going to take some time to recover. And we're not in a hurry. Thank God we don't need to be in a hurry. But even even like right now, just for me to bend my hand like this, uh -huh. just to put my head on there, it hurts really bad right here. And I don't know why. But mm. right here it hurts. Right here it hurts. My neck has been spasming all day long. You know, just different pains that I don't know why it's all going off, but it is. It it feels like someone's got their knee stuck right into my the back of my the side right here where my yeah. kids are at. It feels like someone's sticking their knee right there, and I'm laying on it and trying to fall asleep. That's what it feels like. So I got these two pains right here on the side of my back on both of my kidney areas. Mm. Yeah, and it doesn't feel right. Uncomfortable. Yeah. But I know God has a plan. Yes, and he my does. Mom, my mom has surgery on her right on her left knee, and she's gonna um She's definitely going to need some prayer. Yeah. Her name's Phyllis. Right. And um, that's about it, man. Okay. Pressing on to the higher calling, you know. Just trying to walk my talk. It's not an easy deal. This is a good Bible study, though. Right. <laughs> Samuel, Aaron, and Moses. That's right. The, the three horsemen. <laughs> God's got a plan. Think about it really good, though. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep and piety. Got to keep piety in our, our vocabulary. Right. <laughs> That seems like a really good word to have in your your vocabulary. Right. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and pray out. So, All Lord, right. we just thank you for Psalm 99 uh, in reference to Yahweh's awesome name. Yes. He's holy and he's not from around here. Because, Lord, you said in your word, in John 18, 36, I am not of this world. If it were so then my men would be fighting for me. <laughs> but Lord, we ask that you go before us, Father, and we lift up uh, a big Randy's mom, Lord. Uh, she just got a left knee replacement, Father. We pray that you would just meet her right where she's at, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon her, Father God. Lord, give her supernatural strength, supernatural healing. Remind her, Father, the God, that you will never leave her nor forsake her, Father. Lord, just minister to her heart, her soul, and her mind, Lord. Yes, Lord. We lift up Ken también. Uh, we lift up Ken that's uh, got one lung, Father, and Lord, he's hard breathing, Father. We pray for a brush of fresh air. Yeah, Ken. Lord, 
that you also grant them supernatural strength, supernatural healing, Father. And Rosie también, uh, Lalo's daughter. Yes, Father. Pray God for her deliverance from anxiety, Father. We pray that, uh, Lord, that you would make known her calling. And Lord, allow her to use this testimony, Father God. Yes, to Father. speak to the young generation, Father, who are lost and struggling with their identity, Father. Lord, use her in a mighty way, Father God. Amen. Father, I pray for um, Jeremy Tambien that just lost his dad, Father. We pray that you would bring comfort and peace. Amen. Father, we pray that he would surrender completely to you, Father God. And Lord, that you would meet him right where he's at, Father. Lord, we pray uh, Romans 10, 11. <clears throat> for the scripture says, whoever believes on him, Will not be put to shame. And fear comes about care, fear comes by hearing or seeing something contrary to God's word. Yes. But Father, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a peace, love, and of a sound mind. Lord, we ask that and we pray that. Lord. We pray that into their lives, Father God. This we can trust you. Hermano Randy también, his whole household, Father. Lord, everyone under that roof, Father God, we pray for divine healing, Father. Yes, Lord. Why? Because your word says in ten, Romans 10, 11, it says, for scripture says, whoever believes on him would not be put to shame, God. So, Lord, once again, fear comes from hearing or seeing something that's contrary to your word. Yes, Lord. Second Timothy 1, 6 and 7 says, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. God yes. is not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. Yes, but the Lord. spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, Abba Father. Abba Father, mm -hmm. we pray that you would just take full control Bless of your people and of our loved ones, Father God. Bless each and every In Jesus' name we pray, Father. And Lord, I want to ask also that you touch Junior, Lord God, with your mighty hand, Lord. I ask that you lead him and guide him. Show him what you want him to do. Show him where you want him to go. And bring people to him, Lord God. Whoever needs to know who you are, Lord. And Lord God, I just want to thank you for my brother that's been nothing but a brother to me and has has been there for me, Lord. But Lord, I just want to lift him up to you and just say thank you for letting me have a brother like him, Lord. And Lord, I just want to ask that you bless, bless his wife, bless his kids, bless his whole family, bless his household, bless his bills. And Lord, just... uh. Let all things work together for the good in his life, Lord God. And Lord, this Saturday, if it should tarry, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Before you come, I ask that you touch and bless everything that's going down on that corner. Yes, Lord. People come out, let people get ministered to, let your word go forth. And Lord, just let the peace of God surround all the people there. And give them hope, Lord God, and give them your word in a way that they could trust you and they can ask us to pray for them, Lord God, or whatever, Lord. Use us and help us to love on these people that are all going to need your love one way or another. Help us to be all that. Help us be all things to all men. Help us do whatever we got to do to make things right for these people. And Lord, bless us as we do, Lord, in whatever happens that day, Lord God. And I'm talking as if I'm not going to be sick no more. So, Lord, maybe that's confirmation that you're going to heal me tomorrow. Yes, Lord. So Lord God, I trust you, and I believe that you are all power. And I believe also in the name of Jesus, Jesus, that... I will be healed, Lord God. You are Jehovah Rapha. I yeah. trust you. I believe in you. I, I know that anything I ask in your name, it shall be done. And I believe, Lord God, that you are going to make a way. Lord God, and I honestly want to thank you for that word piety because that's exactly who you are. Your piety, Lord. And I appreciate you a lot. Thank you, Lord, for... Uh, Moses, thank you for Aaron and thank you for Samuel for teaching us who you are in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for these people, Lord God, for writing the Bible. Thank you for who you sent, Lord God. Help us to know your word 
the best we can, Lord. Yes. A to Z in whatever way we can, help us to trust you. Bless mm -hmm. all of our families, our friends, our church. And Lord, we love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And Lord, bless Richard, Lord. Yes. Touch Richard's head and yes. heal him, Lord God. Touch anyone that's sick or heavy laden or something's wrong. Bless each and every one of the people at our church. The uh, help from above ministry, Lord. I ask that you touch each and every one of the, the guys that we missed today, but I ask that you bless all the people that need a hand of healing or just a special touch from you. I ask that you touch them right now in a supernatural way. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Yeah, we lift up great también. <laughs> yeah, oh, Lord. Touch my brother, Lord. Let them know that you love them. Yes, Lord. I'm sorry I didn't lift him up. But Lord, I'm going to ask that you touch my brother, Greg. Yes. With your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. I don't even know what's wrong with my brother. But Lord, I know that he's a special child of yours, Lord. And I just want to ask that you touch my brother. And just give him the strength to pull it off, Lord God. Whatever is hindering him from being able to live his life, Lord God. I ask that you surround him with your love and just give him that peace that passes all understanding. Yes, Lord. So he can just walk out of that hospital and just be the man you want him to be. Mm -hmm. Lord God, be with Greg and just give him life more abundantly in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. What's wrong with Greg? He had some operation and he's having hard breathing. Really? Yeah. He <clears throat> so had a surgery? Yeah, he had some type of surgery. Um, some I didn't know he had surgery. surgery for that stuff. Yeah, he had some kind of surgery and it's hindering his breathing. Um, but Is now he he's in there right now? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, he's still there. Where's he at? At Kaiser right here in Irvine. Kaiser Irvine? Yeah. That's a good hospital. Yeah, it's a good hospital, bro. So I know these. I, have you been there? Uh, yeah, I, I've been there several times to pray for people. <laughs> oh, you were there too. I prayed for you. Yeah. I went there several times. <laughs> yeah, you were there with me, man. <laughs> well, were you, uh, were you there? Have you been over there while he's over there? No, because he has COVID. He oh, it's got COVID. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. So. Did they put him on a respirator? Yeah, but he's already off of the respirator. He's off of it already? He's off of it, and he's off of the feeding tube. He's he's, he's doing a lot better. He's, he's starting to walk around the hospital. How long was he in there for? Since last week. So he got COVID bad. He got in the hospital. Well, they were supposed to do some tests on him. Uh, concerning his heart, but they couldn't do it because he had COVID. So he went back home, and then that's when he collapsed, and Thank they rushed him to the hospital, and they yeah. did the test, some of the tests that they needed to do, and I operated on homeboy. So, so he's in the recovery uh, stage right now. Um, pero he is doing a little better. He's just in recovery. <clears throat> So, but call him when you have chance. When you have a chance tomorrow, just give him a call. Yeah, give him a call. He needs that phone call from all of us. Heavenly um, Father, just you said when two or three gather together in your name, you're here. And Lord, I just want to lift up Greg to you right now. I just want to ask that you give him the strength that he needs to just pull it off, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give him the strength that he needs to just stand up and walk, Lord. And, you know, he's still a hustler, and he's still this, and he's still that, Lord God. But we might not know him like you know him, Lord God. So I want to ask that you just give him the strength that he needs to just get get off that, that, that bed and walk, Lord God. Walk on out of there, Lord. Just be with my brother. I love this guy, Lord God. Just touch him and, 
and and heal him and set him free so he can be free indeed and just get the heck out of that hospital, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just be with our brother in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. We pray for his sister también, Lord, that you would comfort her. And, and Lord, just uh, give her that peace or pass the understanding. Nor that Greg is, is in good hands because yeah. whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> yes. So, Lord, Thank we just need the blood of Jesus upon our brother there and his familia too, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, hermano. Thank you, right, All right. Hey, Junior. All right. Are we out there? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. But, yeah. I'll, I'll catch you there. Okay, come on. All right, man. I love you, man. Love you too, bro. Everything. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay, bye.